Okay, welcome to Rick's Corner. I have a friend of mine today, Vince Adams, who is a bodybuilder, an actor. He was Conan at Universal Studios. He's done just about everything, and he also played some Olympic Games. Um, the Scottish Highland Games. Scottish Highland Games, that's right. Yeah. Um, we've been friends a long, long time, and you've been training for how long? Uh, about 40 years. Wow, long time. Yeah, started when I was a kid. I was about 11. Yeah. Scraped up my nickels and my dimes, and I went to the uh, local YMCA, and I bought a membership, and went down there and just started learning. I, I would look at the guys that had the best physiques. Yeah. And then I would ask them, you know, like my buddy Pete Marino, who had the hardest biceps you ever saw in your life. And yeah. I'd ask Pete, you know, how did you get the, the biceps? And, you know, these guys would, would help me out a lot. Yeah, this old school. Oh, very old school. And we've talked a lot about old school, and, and I've done a lot of Rick's Corners on it, and Vince is really old school when it comes to training. Um, you were from back east. Correct, Connecticut. Well, Connecticut. Yeah. WWE. WWE, yeah. Um, back then, training your training probably was a lot different than it is today. Yes. What were the methods you used then? Uh, back in where I came from, back on the East Coast, the, uh, the idea was train as heavy as you can and eat as much as you can. Yeah, that was our that's philosophy. That's old school, yeah. yeah. And how many times a week? And I would train, um, well, when I first started, it was like three days a week. Mm -hmm. You know, and then as I progressed, I would train more and more. And uh, at one point, I was training about six days a week, just because I, the, that was the only place I felt comfortable and, and happy was in the gym. Yeah, well, so we all, we all do. all the time. You know, you know we, we talked about that. I talked about Steve Reeves and, and the guys from the 50s and the 60s. Um, many of them just trained three days a week because back then, three days a week, there was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday were men's days. Yeah. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday were women's days. So you couldn't get to the gym six days a week. Now, I was lucky enough to work for a gym, and I worked ladies' days. So when no one was there for an hour, I trained. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of sneaked my workouts in. <laughs> so, uh, oh, my God, that was so much fun because I, I closed up at night, and there were a couple of girls that would stay late in the shower, and they want me to bring them the towel. And one of them <laughs> wanted me to stay after and kind of have fun on the, on the, uh, leg, uh, the leg extension machine. <laughs> oh, my God. But that's all right. We had a good time. Um, but the old school method of three days a week uh, was it. Was it each body part three times a week? Uh, yeah, in the beginning, yeah, yeah, I would train every each body part. I'm actually thinking about going to something like that. I keep on uh, combining my workouts. Yeah, you know, now I do three bodies. I do the the push pull system again. Yeah, you know, and so I'm doing three body parts. Yeah, in uh, in one training session now. As I get older, I you know I condense it more and more. Yeah, and you can do that. You can't do as many sets. No, my volume is lower. Yeah. That's what I did. I combined uh, muscle groups and I lowered the volume. Right. Kind of like, like this when you talk, I lowered the volume. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, the funny thing was that three days a week, remember when I hurt my legs and I was in that walker? Yes. Oh. I did everything every day for three days a week on, each, on yeah. every body part and I grew. It actually worked yeah. um, because I was putting more energy into my workout and I was taking the rest days in between and doing something else, but the three day a week routine for a short time worked. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind going back to I just don't want to spend hours in the gym. I mean, I hours either. in the gym yeah. is tiring. I ran into Ferrigno two weeks ago, and he says, uh, what's new, Rick? I said, we're just talking. And I said, I just want to get out of the gym. He says, isn't it funny? Years ago, we come to the gym, and we want to spend hours training. Now we look at the clock and see how soon we can get out of here. Yeah. And it's true. I mean, it gets to that point. You want a good workout, but, you know, you're ready to leave. Right. Um, but, but today's methods of training, um, my God, these guys are doing sets upon sets upon sets. Oh, the volume. It's and incredible. And you can't do it without drugs. No. And see, that's the thing. They, they're training. They don't train as intensely as we did. Right. We train like madmen, heavy, hard. Yeah. They don't train quite as heavy. They nope. don't train quite as intense. There's a few that do. There's a few. And, but they rely on drugs. Yeah, 100%. And, and the other thing is when you look at the magazines and you see these guys lifting these heavy, heavy poundages and say they're talking about their training, it's only for the picture. Right. Franco and Arnold did the same thing. They load the bar up as big as they could. They do one pull with it, and they say, okay, that's my training exercise. This is what I work with. Yeah. <laughs> but it ain't true. It doesn't no. happen like that. I had a friend who, uh, <clears throat> from Connecticut, and he read about Arnold and Franco and all this weight they used to use, and he was killing himself to get to those weights. I mean, literally killing himself. And he got like close to the weights that they were using in this article. And then years later, he met Arnold, and Arnold said, we never did that. No. <laughs> There's a few guys in our gym now that you know, and they're really good guys. And I talked about training. They're doing, I did 
chest with him the other day. We did four exercises, four sets each. So we did 16 sets. Maybe we did 17 or 18 total with a warm up. Yeah. He says, well, now what? I said, I'm done. He said, what do you mean you're done? We've got two or three more exercises. Oh. I said, no, I don't. He said, I feel like I didn't do anything yet. I said, you, and he says, and I can't gain weight. And there I said, you because you're overtraining. You don't need more than that. Guy, you're doing way too many sets. I probably did too many that day. And, I, I keep, and his weight keeps going down. He keeps losing weight. Well, he's overtraining. Right. And a lot of you guys, you know, you want to spend hours doing the same body part over and over. You can't. You kill the muscle. Yeah, because, you know, bodybuilders' mentality is a little works, a maybe lot. more. Yeah. I'll do more. But you can't. That volume, the, the body needs to recuperate. And if it doesn't recuperate from the, uh, the exercises, yeah. then you're, you're going to go backwards. Yeah, exactly. You're killing the muscle. Yeah. So you competed what year? I competed, my first competition was in 1979. Mm -hmm. And my last competition was the um, Masters Natural uh, Olympia mm -hmm. in 2000. Mm -hmm. And I took second in that. Oh, nice. And that was the last time I competed. You don't want to compete anymore? I'd like to, but it's just expensive. It's time consuming. Yeah. I don't want to eat, you know, like I did before, you know. And well, it's a job. You know, within the last, you know, last couple of years, um, you know, I've dropped all the weight. That was about 275 a couple of years ago. I remember. And um, I could have competed then, but it was just, uh, you know, too much of life going on. And How much have you dropped? Hard. I've dropped uh, about 60 pounds. And you feel better? I feel great, yeah. I feel good. I sleep well. I don't have stomach problems or indigestion. Yeah. You know. oh, I that's sleep through the whole night. Yeah, me too. You know. <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, the less weight, I'm down 22 pounds, and I, yeah. I definitely feel better. Um, sometimes it makes you feel a little puny. Yeah, you I know, but you get over that mentally because you're really not. Yeah. You know, you're still. I mean, at two twelve, two thirteen, I'm still heavier than most guys that that don't work out. So yeah, that's the thing. Because people will look at me and they'll remember what I used to look like, and then yeah. they'll say, "Oh, wow, you're skinny." Well, that's funny because I have people come up to me, especially women, and say, "Wow, you look great. What'd you do? You lean out or something? You look younger." Yeah, and I think, uh, I think the less weight that you do, yeah. you know, it does something to you. You look like you have more energy and you're healthier. Yeah. But you competed, and then you you did Conan at Universal right, Studios. Right. And what year was that? That was in 1982. That must have been fun. It was a load of fun. There was a camaraderie with the guys that was like the old time bodybuilding. Yeah. We did things together. We hung around. We went to the gym together. It was it was fantastic. Oscar and Rich and Oscar Rich, yeah. uh, Kevin Canada, all all the guys. Mike Michaud. Mark Comperi. Mark came in after I did. Mm -hmm. But I knew Mark. Yeah. I was there a little, you know, a little bit while he was there. But yeah. Mark was a great another great guy. It oh, was great just guy. so much fun with there all There was the also guys. a guy that I brought into wrestling, a black guy with blue eyes, um, big calves. That did the Conan thing. Yes, I'm trying to remember his name. I know it's on the tip of my tongue because I broke him into wrestling. I took him up to uh, the Bay Area and we did a match together and he told me his calves were real. Yeah, no, I, I don't, don't think know. they were. Yeah, I don't think they were. Yeah. The name will come to me at some point in my life. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll be off camera by then. Yeah, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. I know exactly. Who you're yeah, talking then about. I heard he got real sick and he lost a lot of weight yeah. and I haven't seen him since. And um, I'm still trying to think of his name. Yeah, he used to be in the gym all the time. Yeah, um, I, I know that Conan thing was a lot of fun. The working at Universal was fun. And, yeah. Um, so now you're doing fitness training. Yes. Fitness and you're always looking for new clients, always. you guys. And hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy. Yeah. If you're here in Los Angeles, you can always look up Vince or get it through yeah. him to me. And um, let's talk about one more thing. You wanted to start, or you and Joanne Turi had talked to me about starting a club. Yes. And it's called the Nostalgic Bodybuilding Club. Right, exactly. Of America. Of, do you, we can say that. Well, of the no, world. Of the world, yeah, the international. Because there's fans all over. Well, there's, I had said there's a, a club called the Cauliflower Alley Club, which is a club of old wrestlers. Not old, but new. And they started years back with a, a wrestler actor named Mike Mazurki, and they used to meet every week at the Spaghetti Factory, and they have lunch, and they'd talk about things they wanted to do. This is similar to that. You would have a group of guys who would bring back the old memorabilia from bodybuilding way back when, and have maybe a meeting, maybe have a convention, bring artifacts, and maybe a newsletter, and a website where everybody can join and become part of this group, and maybe have like a yearly two-day event. Right, With exactly. contests, and bringing the old guys back to talk, with seminars, and all that kind of stuff. It's never been done. No, it's I think time. this is a great idea because so many of you guys write into me about old school bodybuilding. What did you do? What did you do? How did you see, did you see so and so? Well, we bring those people forward where you can actually sit and talk to them and meet them and ask questions. So what I'd like you to do is write in to me through rickscorner.com and tell me your feeling about doing this, whether you're a yay or a nay or on Facebook with me. And Vince and I will sit down and probably line this thing out and get it going. 
So it would be Nostalgic, Nostalgic Bodybuilders Club of the world. Right. And we'll try to get members from all over the world that we can interact and have blogs and talk to each other and maybe do something really fun with it. Yeah, I think it would be a lot of fun because there's a lot of people out there that, that still love that old school bodybuilding. Oh, yeah. when it was The physiques were beautiful yeah. and the, you know, the camaraderie and the personalities were you know, just like celebrities. And you came out here in what year? I came out here in 81. Uh, so you missed the whole golden era of gold. Uh, yeah, I ca when I came here, it had moved over to uh, was it Hampton? Yeah. South Hampton. Now. Yeah. yeah, it had just moved over there. Yeah, and that's where I trained. Yeah, I just guys. ran six episodes of Rick's Corner on the '80s and goals. I happen to have some footage that I broke down in the six episodes of guys training back then, and when they shot um, the A team with Mr. T and Hulk Hogan in the gym, and uh, oh, Samir and Rick Valenti and all those guys. It was really good footage, but there's not much of that around. It's no. really hard to find, um, but I happen to have it. So. Yeah. Maybe I'll stumble onto some more. Yeah. Well, um, so you're still training every day. I'm still training. Uh, well, now I go three days on, one day off. Okay. You know, um, like I said, I'm in, I'm in there about half the time that I was before. You mm -hmm. know, I, I I just had to you know come to the realization and accept that I cannot train like I did when I was younger. I can't lift the heavy weights, the volume. I can't train no. with that volume no. and. And, you know, I, I, I want to enjoy my life, and there's other things I want to well, do. Well, I think a lot of it is it's, you, you, you can do it if you want to do it, but you don't want to. I mean, I go in the gym, I think, oh, I think I'll take the dumbbells today and work up to 80s or 100. And then I'll look at the machine and say, no, I think I'll take the machine. Yeah. I just don't have the desire to do it. Yeah. You know, I, got, uh, I got in an automobile accident uh, several months ago. I got rear-ended, and it, it uh, hurt my neck pretty bad. Yeah. And ever since then... You know, it's been tough. I'll go in there and I'll train, and it'll it'll it just hurts. Yeah. You know, so I get rear-ended on the street yeah. corner, and I wasn't in my car. What no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not like that. Uh, yeah, injuries take their toll. I'm telling. You, I know yeah. I have them, and, and we all have them. And eventually, yeah. the more you train, the more you'll get them. But uh, do you have a website? Uh, yes, uh, my website is VinceAdamsTraining.com. So you guys got that. I'll put that up, VinceAdamsTraining.com. You can write to him, ask him questions, see if you want him to train you. And he's reachable through me as well. So stay tuned because we'll have more on Rick's Corner. I'll put that, we'll put more up as we go along with the, uh, the uh, bodybuilding club that we want to do and keep you guys advised. And I'd like to hear about your feelings about it. And um, thank you, Vince, for being on here and talking to you. And stay tuned for more Rick's Corner because I'm going to bring you more good stuff, as you know. Take care. Say goodbye, Vince. Bye. Thanks, Rick.